it's your girl Ellie Ames, and for those of you who do not know me, I'm a legal and licensed luxury courtesan here at Sage Rush Ranch, which is a legal brothel in Mountain House, Nevada. So today I just wanted to stop and address a question that I've been kind of asked frequently, and it's why is it that banks and credit card companies may deny services to sex workers as well as to why they may face account closures or denials? So today I'm just going to kind of go a little more into detail on that. Um, I did write this down so I don't forget it is a lot to remember. So if it looks like I'm reading some of it, I'm going back and referencing and yes, I might be reading it. <laughs> um, so while some banks and credit card companies may not explicitly state that they deny services to legal sex workers, um, they often have policies in place that can indirectly lead to account closures or denials. And here's some of the reasons as to why. So one, Risk of reputable damage. Yes, they are worried about their reputation. So negative public perceptions are one. Um, some banks may fear negative publicity or backlash from customers and the general public. If it's known that they do business with sex workers. Um, another thing is association with illegal activities. And even though sex work may be legal in certain jurisdictions, such as the one I'm currently in, it is still often stigmatized and associated with illegal activities, such as human trafficking or money laundering. And banks, they just might want to distance themselves from such associations. Number two, regulatory compliance. So anti-money laundering regulations like the AML, Banks are required to comply with AML regulations, which aim to prevent laundering and terrorist financing. Sex work, especially in cash-based transactions, can sometimes be perceived as a higher risk industry for money laundering. And then we have your Know Your Customer, KYC procedures. So banks do have a strict KYC procedures that, to identify and verify customers. So sex work may face difficulties in providing traditional documentation like employment contracts, or even tax returns, which can trigger red flags. So then we're gonna move on to number three, practical considerations, such as transaction monitoring. So banks use sophisticated systems to monitor transactions for suspicious activity. Sex workers' income may be perceived as irregular or difficult to explain, leading to increased scrutiny and potential account closures. And then we move on to chargebacks and disputes. So sex work often involves transactions that can be disputed or charged back, which can increase operational costs for the banks. And it's also important to note that this is not a universal practice, you guys. Um, there are some banks and credit unions that are more open to serving sex workers. However, the challenges faced by sex workers in assessing financial services remains a significant issue. And we are in luck, though. There are advocacy groups and organizations that are working to raise awareness about this issue and promote financial inclusion for sex workers. So that is a big plus. So if you have any other questions regarding this or just in general, go ahead and leave them in the comments. And I hope that this helped answer some of those questions regarding banks and financing for sex workers. Thanks. Bye. Mwah. <laughs>